be here. Uh, some of you um, I know from years and years ago. I was a parishioner here from basically seven years old to I don't know when. Um, and so I worshipped here and uh, helped with liturgy and did all sorts of things. And so it's a great privilege to be here to celebrate uh, today, um, to preside at the Eucharist. Because I know one of the things that I really appreciated was seeing people like Jenny Terrell up here. Um, and they inspired me to, to seek ordination. This is, is this not loud enough? No, we will. I think something's wrong with the bar. Ah, I think something's slightly uh, wrong with the mic this morning, but that's okay. Anyway, my name is Helen Wilderspin, and I was a parishioner here when I was a, a young child into my early 20s, I think. And so I, it's a great privilege to be here to worship with you and to preside. And I just said that there were some wonderful role models here when I was growing up, like Jenny Terrell. And uh, Roy Everill was a great um, mentor and support for those of us who wanted to get more involved in ministry. I'll talk a bit more about what I'm doing during the sermon uh, and it'd be lovely to catch up with you after the service. But let's just pause for a moment and be aware of God's presence with us. Thanks be to God for your generosity and the gift of your son. May we come to know him more day by day as we journey through the season of Epiphany and then on towards Easter. Amen. So welcome. It's great to have you with us today, Helen, and we're looking forward to hearing more about, your, about what you're doing. So let's start our service. Um, have we got the, the overheads there? I think we know it reasonably, but... Wonderful. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. We're going to stand for our first hymn. And for those with children, there are activities at the back there today. So our first hymn, Tell Out My Soul. It is on the screen here, fortunately. <laughs>
So please kneel or sit for our time of confession. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us, some escape us, some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. The sentence for today is from Luke. Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. And we pray together, God of justice and compassion, you anointed Jesus to bring good news to the poor, freedom from bondage, and new vision to the blind. Send your spirit upon us, so we proclaim and live your new life. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the readings, and as usual, we have a, a time of reflection reflection before the gospel. The first reading is taken from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, 
eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from Luke, chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of Christ. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, beginning with verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him was spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to acclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your, your hearing. This is the gospel of Christ.
Please be seated. By chance, we've had the gospel twice, and I think it's an important gospel this morning because it ties in really well with the theme, which is about embodying Christ. And there's something about uh, the gospel and the good news that often we kind of flick through very quickly and we don't just let it settle and be. And it's something that we, I wonder if we need to have it more often in a service. We've had it uh, as part of the um, reading. We've had it twice. So it's about what we do with it now. And one of the things I've been exploring, um, I'm doing some study and I'm doing a doctorate and I've been thinking about how do we actually embody the gospel? I remember um, being here a long time ago and doing some clowning with Wynne and John Bly and Blythe and there was a pulpit back then and um, I did some things around the pulpit and had kind of a, a conversation, if you can have a conversation with, I think it was Margaret. Um, we were having this, I was silent but she was acknowledging what I was trying to express through movement and through my own actions and my own presence. And I, I found it profound to be in a space where I was recognised in my kind of clown persona. Yes, underneath was Helen, but I was also Poe. And Poe was a character who um, delighted in life, who found uh, joy wherever she went, who found kind of laughter, who also felt that it was important to respect and honour everyone around them and to respect the space. I actually continued clowning uh, into my 20s and early 30s. I haven't done it for a while. Um, I remember in one church when I was ordained, um, Poe presided, and it was some of the most profound moments because it was in silence. And it was almost as if it invited people into the kind of the holy presence of God without the words getting in the way. I think sometimes we talk too much. Sometimes we just need to be still and work out what's happening kind of underneath. So as I was thinking about the doctorate, um, I came up with the idea of exploring creativity and playfulness. And I don't know if there are any teachers here, especially um, primary school teachers, but there's a, a method, creative play, that's being developed more recently to help uh, children to, to learn through kind of tactile, kinesthetic, um, yes, yeah, not, yeah, not so formal learning. Uh, but one of the things that we're doing, um, that educators are doing at the moment is looking about how can we do creative play with adults. And so I've been considering how can creative play help us to learn, to help our spirituality, and to help us in terms of lit liturgy. 
and how we can be more present and embody Christ. And at St John's, uh, it's great. There's, um, I mean, I'm sure Louise has said and others and curates, there's a, a mix of cultures and tikanga, and it's always insightful to hear from others how they perceive things. And I was sitting uh, listening to a sermon from some from Te Kangamari, and he talked about Te Rongapai. And the gospel of Christ in Māori is Te Rongapai. And Rongo, he said, is about to hear, to taste, to smell, to perceive, and to feel. And so when you put that with the good news, to hear, to taste, to smell, to perceive, to feel the good news of Christ. And I thought, oh, whoa. Here we are, and often in church, we sit and all we do is really listen. And we watch, and we stand up and down, and we taste a bit with the communion. I mean, we can't have wine at the moment, uh, but there's something, there's some taste. We gather for morning tea, so there's hospitality, and we eat together, and there are other occasions where we um, have meals. But what does it mean to perceive What does it mean to taste Christ apart from communion? So I've been exploring this with a, a group. Um, St. John's, there are regular worship services in the, the morning and kind of before lunch um, and also in the evening. And there are various groups that are set up to do those services. So we're on a bit of a roster. And the group, um, they're called Talai Waka. The last two years have been called the Talai Waka, which is about how forming community into um, the waka or the, the canoe or the, the vehicle to carry us forward. And uh, they were quite enthusiastic about my research, thankfully. Um, it's always nice when people are enthusiastic about what you do. And so I've been working with them uh, in the last year, trying to explore creative play and the good news through the taste, the perceiving. So we've been doing things in the liturgies uh, around it. I mean, quite simple things. Um, one of them, we had a theme where it was kind of about food in the Gospels, and there were some wonderful readings for that week um, that had food. There was John the Baptist with locusts and honey, and I remember in the group when we were planning the meeting, someone went, ooh, mm, I wonder what locusts taste like. Have any of you had locusts? Um, mm. try it once uh, I don't know it's probably an acquired taste uh, the kind of crunchy, dry not much to them really but anyway we're sitting there and someone went I know why don't we get some and I went okay and the others went oh yep sounds great and so they went on their phone and you can source them in New Zealand. So we got them, and down the back of the college is a beehive, or several beehives, and one of the um, staff, he has some honey from the hive. So we thought, oh, well, we'll have locusts and honey. And then there were um, other readings, the one about, um, was it giving, oh, I can never remember it, Anyway, um, you'd think I'd be prepared, wouldn't you? Uh, 
<sighs> anyway, fish, giving fish instead of a rock or something like that, um, which is a bizarre reading. Anyway, so I got chocolate fish and handed out at the end chocolate fish and there was one about log in your eye and I thought, oh, well, why don't we have one of those um, straw, cheese straws? So I gave out those. It was great. The laughter, the engagement, and people kind of who participated in the service thought, oh, oh, this makes sense now. I can kind of understand it or perceive it or taste what the scripture is trying to tell me. So that's really just one example of what I've been exploring. And so it's been a, a great privilege to journey along with the group and I'm writing it up at the moment. Um, but one of the most powerful things I think for me was at the end of the, well, end of October, we had a, they're called focus group debriefs, ignore that. Anyway, it's like a summary of the year, and it was an hour on Zoom, which isn't always the easiest to manoeuvre with, but we had this hour of talking about the year, how everybody found it, what they'd learnt, and it was just amazing that people felt like they had been inspired but also fed and that their, their sense of God had been expanded through trying all these different things. And one of them is going into a ministry position and he's going to take some of the things that we've been doing or the concepts into his parish. And I thought, yes, I've done it. I've managed it. So to embody, uh, one thing I would like you to take away is as you go through the week, think about what you're doing and does that make you feel or in the presence of God receiving Christ in a new way. If you're having coffee in the morning, what does that bring to your senses when you think about having coffee? Is it the resting? Is it the, the energy? And then making connection with God and the scripture. Meeting with friends, even with masks on. Is there something about community? So try and think about how you are, if you hold Christ within you, how is that in the world? So we'll just take a moment uh, to pause and to think about Te Longa Pai, to creativity and playfulness and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in all that we do to be present to Christ who nurtures us and gathers us and loves us. Amen. Thank you, Helen, for that. I've got a lot to be thinking about this week. So let us now stand to affirm our faith.
You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. So let us kneel or sit for our prayers. I was thinking during the sermon that maybe I should have a scroll so that I could unroll the scroll. It might be better than just uh, sheets of paper that I um, sometimes get mixed up with. Now you're going to find the responses on the screen, I hope. So let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Caring God, as many of us are enjoying the opportunity of exploring our own country in these summer months, we thank you for your gifts in creation, for our world, the heavens tell of your glory, for our land, its beauty and its resources, for the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth, that we may use your gifts responsibly. We pray for those who are working over this holiday period to keep us healthy and well fed. For those who work on the land and sea, in city and in industry, that all may enjoy the fruits of their labours and marvel at your creation. For artists, scientists and visionaries, that they, through their work we may see creation afresh. We thank you for giving us life, for all who enrich our experience. We pray for Tonga, as they recover from the recent volcanic eruption and tsunami with the ever-present threat of further eruptions. We pray for the agencies providing resources and that aid will reach those in need. We pray for places experiencing political unrest, particularly for the escalating tensions between Russia and the Ukraine. We pray for those close to us who are sick or in any other need of help. For all who are deprived of fullness of life, for prisoners, refugees and those who are sick, for those in politics, medical science, social and relief work, and for your church, for all who bring sickness to others. We thank you that you have called us to celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world. We thank you for your redeeming love. May your word and sacrament strengthen us to love as you love us. As we look at this new week, let's think as Helen um, inspired us to 
of how God is working through us with the people we meet at work, our friends, at the supermarket. We pray for the many who are facing new things this year, perhaps starting school or a new classroom of teachers, perhaps university, a new job. God, creator, bring us new life. Jesus, redeemer, renew us. Holy Spirit, strengthen and guide us. Let's say this together. God, you shape our dreams. As we put our trust in you, may your hopes and desires be yours. And we, your expectant people. Amen. We finish our time of prayer with the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the peace. God of grace, whose love eternal brings us life in Christ your Son, help us listen, give us vision in your body. Oh, sorry, we're now singing a song. My apologies. The peace should be first. Anyway, it's a long time since I presided, but I didn't think it was that long. Anyway, the peace of God be with you all. Etefano, Christ calls us to live in unity. And let's acknowledge one another. Try not to move around too much, but just offer one another the peace of Christ. So now we come to our offertory hymn. Um, We won't be passing the the offertory bag around today, uh, but there is an offertory box at the back. If you haven't already used it, you could after the service. So our hymn is God of grace, whose love eternal brings us life in Christ your Son.
We give thanks to God for the offerings this morning, for the ministry of St. Aidan's, both here and more widely in our community. We pray especially for the city mission and for all that we can can assist with their ministry and all that they do. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ. You are the source of all life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Saviour. In the fullness of time, he became incarnate and suffered death on the cross. You raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him, you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. And so we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed be glory, almighty God. Because on the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. With thanksgiving and hope we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work, to be your body in the world. United in Christ, Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we raise to you, O God, our songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. His blood 
was shed for our forgiveness. Become God's people. Come to receive Christ's heavenly food. Communion will be served in one kind, the bread, just come up, and uh, once you've received, just go back to your seats.
Redeemer. We give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your servant, our friend and brother. Amen. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and giver of life, be with you now and all those you meet. Amen. the time of notices. So first of all, if we want to have a cup of tea and coffee afterwards, we have to have some volunteers uh, because we don't have a roster in January. So are there, are there some people who would help us with that? Yes. Yes, we, we are allowed. We might not be next week, but we are this week. Still allowed. <laughs> okay. Now, um, the newsletter you can pick up outside if you didn't on the way in. And there are several things there um, to, to look at, but a couple that need uh, perhaps emphasising um, is the, the, the link that the to the diocesan way of being able to contribute to the Tongan um, aid. So have a look at that and see if you feel inspired to, to give help in that way. Also, um, we are now thinking about making Kerry's home, um, doing something to it, and so we want painters to do some interior window painting at the clergy house. So have a look there, and there's a sign-up sheet out in the gathering area for you to look at. I'd like to thank, on behalf of us all, Helen for coming and sharing with us her um, inspiration from the, the, um, the thesis that she's doing for her doctorate. So thank you very much for coming and leading the service. And if you think that we, it hasn't gone quite as planned as usual, that only tells you how good our usual people are at running a service. And lastly, we come to celebrations, and I know of one celebration already, and that's Patricia, Patricia Maud, who's 96 tomorrow. But are there any other celebrations of, of um, birthdays or um, anniversaries or anything else? God, um, grandchildren born? Nobody else celebrating today? Oh, yes, the hand going up. Oh. Anne Marie? Pop up your hand again, Gloria. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. So, let us um, sing our last hymn together, and it's a great hymn. It's one of Shirley Murray's hymns. And so... Um, we could probably, if we're thinking creatively, we could probably be dancing out of church today with every day I will offer you, loving God, my heart and mind. So let's stand and sing that. <laughs> 